In this video, we're going to derive the transfer function of an operational amplifier in its non-inverting configuration. A transfer function, as the name suggests, describes the nature of the output signal from a device in terms of the input signals. For continuous time inputs, i.e. inputs which are free to evolve over time, not discreetly sampled, we can model transfer functions as linear mappings of the Laplace transform of the inputs to the Laplace transform of the outputs. Don't worry if you're not familiar with the Laplace transform. In this instance, it should be pretty clear what's happening, and it's nice and simple. Before we begin, we need to make some assumptions about the behaviour of an op-amp in this configuration. These assumptions model the ideal characteristics of an op-amp. The most important one is this first one, infinite input impedance. This is important, as during our proof, we need to be sure that no current flows into either of the inputs. During the following proof, we will denote the voltage gain of the op-amp as, as AOL sorry, for open loop gain. We will assume that this approaches infinity, which is a very good model for most op-amps. First, let's express what we know about the voltage gain of the device. It's the output voltage over the input voltage. Now to leave this here, we'll come back to this at the end. For now, let's try to find a recursive definition of our output voltage which only depends on one of the inputs, the input we control, the non-inverting input expressed here as VI of T. Let's first find the output voltage by its elementary definition. By default, i.e. without a feedback path, the voltage at the output is the open loop voltage gain multiplied by the difference between the non-inverting and inverting inputs. Now let's notice something about the inverting input. As no current is flowing into this input, the voltage here is the direct result of the voltage divider formed by RF and RI. So from the output voltage, we can scale using the standard resistor divider equation RI on RF plus RI in this case. I'm also going to change the non-inverting input voltage to VI of T as that's what we have labelled here. So the voltage at the inverting input is now just the voltage at the output, output multiplied by RI on RF plus RI. Let's expand our bracket now. This will make it a little easier to do the Laplace transform in a moment. Next, let's perform a Laplace transform to both sides. Don't worry if you're not sure what's happening here, we're effectively converting from the time domain to the frequency domain, something you'll do a lot later with signal processing. So let's go ahead and do that now. So do the Laplace transform, and this I'm using this notation to denote that we're doing it to the entire thing, to both sides. So this just becomes of S because we're now in the frequency domain. like so. Now let's take this term over to the other side to isolate the output voltage. So it's going to become... So I'm going to actually factor this out immediately. So we have one here and when we take this term across we're going to have a positive open loop gain multiplied by this. So positive open loop gain multiplied by our resistor divider equation 
and that's just going to equal the open loop gain multiplied by the voltage at the input, like so. So going back to our expression for voltage gain, we can see that we need VO over VI. So let's divide both sides um, by VI, and let's also divide both sides by this bracket here so that we don't have anything else on this side apart from the output voltage and the input voltage. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have the output voltage over the input voltage. And over this side, we just have the open loop gain divided by this lump here. So 1 plus the open loop gain multiplied by Ri over Rf plus Ri. Now let's notice something. So let's use the assumption that our um, open loop gain approaches infinity. So let's evaluate the limit as the open loop gain approaches infinity as per our assumption. In a limit to infinity, this one loses all of its significance and can be ignored as a zero. So let's go ahead and just say that's now nothing. Now the gain divides neatly out. So these two go away, leaving this fraction on the denominator. When we have a fraction on the denominator and a one on the numerator, we can simply invert the fraction on the de denominator as such. So we can say this is effectively now equal to, well, actually, technically, we should say the limit as A O L approaches infinity, although it's getting a bit cramped in here now. Hopefully you can see that. Um, that is equal to R F plus R I on R I. And voila, we have our voltage gain. Now notice how it doesn't quite appear in the same form um, as we are used to. That can be solved quite easily by splitting up this fraction. So let's go ahead and write the final, exp um, final ex uh, equation now. So this is going to be the closed loop non-inverting configuration voltage gain. And that is going to be equal to, so let's split this up. So we have an Ri over Ri plus our feedback resistor over our inverting input resistor. And you can see that this here goes to a one so we're just left with 1 plus RF on RI. And so this is kind of pretty much the final answer. And uh, note that this formula is only true for the non-inverting configuration.